Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the world of fonts. I don't know about you, but after doing graphic design for over 26 years, I've built up quite a collection of fonts. But the thing about that is, there's still tons of new fonts out there. So we have to keep downloading more and more fonts just to keep up with all the latest trends. And in order to do that, we have to know where to find all the latest fonts. Which brings us to one of the main topics of this video, where to go to find new fonts. Luckily, I have a list of several popular sites we're going to take a look at. The first site is called Font Squirrel. This site claims that all of their fonts are 100% free for commercial use, but you should still check the license just to make sure if you have any question. On their site, they have a list of the hottest fonts. They have a list of recently added fonts. Down here you can see that they have fonts listed by categories. And although you can see a preview of all the fonts, you can't type in your own text to preview the fonts in. The next site we're going to take a look at is called Defont. And here you see a few of the recently added fonts. At the top here they have fonts listed by themes. They have new fonts. They have the top fonts that have been downloaded from their website. Under themes, you can look up fonts by different categories. You can preview the fonts and you can also input your own text to see how your text is going to look in each font. You can type in the text, choose how many fonts per page, what size you want the text to be, and click submit. And it will show you the fonts in the text that you typed in. And that's pretty neat when you're trying to find a font for a logo or something to match your project. It's really helpful. The rest of these sites are pretty similar, so we're just going to quickly go through them. The next one is 1001 Free Fonts. Another one is 1001 Fonts. There's Urban Fonts. Font Space, Font Zone, and the last one we have is eFonts.co. In each of these fonts you can preview the fonts. Some of them you can input your own text. So they're all basically like the first two we looked at. So anyway, that's a list of a few of the most popular websites where you can go to download fonts. The next website we're going to look at is a website called cooltext.com. On this site, what you can do is you can pick one of these styles of lettering that you want to use. When you click on it, it'll take you to where you can edit it. You can edit the text and it will show you what your text is going to look like in the font. You can change the size. I believe the size you can go up to about 600. You can change the color. You can add a shadow. Here you can choose the alignment and you can download it as a GIF, a JPEG, a ping a layered PSD file or a GIMP format and if you choose the Photoshop you can download that open it up in Photoshop and it will still be on layers. You'll have a layer for the text, a layer for the shadow. The next section of fonts we're going to look at are web fonts. You have fonts.google.com where you can use these fonts on your website you have Typekit, which are Adobe fonts, and then Font Squirrel. They have a page where you can upload your own fonts, and it will create a web font that you can use on your website. So this could be pretty handy if you want to use a custom font on your website and not the same old boring fonts that everyone else uses. The next section of fonts we're going to look at are some commercial font websites. 
First one we have is Creative Market, and they offer a lot more than just fonts, but you can see here they have fonts categorized in different categories. So you can just click on the category to browse the fonts in that section. And these are commercial fonts, so you will have to buy these. The next one is Font House. They also have them broken down into categories. We have myfonts.com. And my fonts represents several different font foundries. Then we have uh, fontspring.com. Adobe our commercial fonts for printing the next one is p22.com and they're a small type foundry that has uh, custom fonts that they've created again they're broken down into categories here We have fontshop.com. You can check out their fonts. We have lonotype.com. And lonotype is part of monotype. And monotype represents several different font boundaries as well. And then typenetwork.com is also another website that represents several font foundries like Font Bureau and some of the other ones. The next few websites we're going to go through are to help you identify fonts. Sometimes you may get something from a client and they'll say we want to use this font but we don't know what it's called and you'll need to try to match it as close as possible. Some fonts are fairly easy to identify. Some fonts you'll be able to recognize some fonts you can use an identifier to help you figure it out some fonts are very difficult to identify so there's websites that you can submit samples to to help you identify so the first one we're going to look at is font squirrel here they have a font identifier so to use this font identifier click on your text and you can drag it over and drop it here It'll process the image and it'll come up, highlight the text you wish to match. So we'll just, uh, we'll drag these in a little closer. And then we'll tell it to match it. And then it'll come up down here and give you fonts that are similar to the one you put in. Now I use copper plate. So this came up with some that are similar. It even came up with copper plate, different variations of copper plate. So that one worked pretty well. The next one we're gonna look at is what the font. Pretty much works the same way. So what we're gonna do is click on choose file, go down to our file, open it, continue. It'll look through your text and find each character so you just kind of make sure these characters match. That's a capital X, capital X. All these are lowercase. We'll click continue. And there, it located the right font. Came up with hobo, which that's correct, that is hobo. The next one is identify. This one works a little different. This one, you don't upload an image. It just asks you a series of questions and you answer the questions based on the font you're looking at. So the next one is Font Spring. And this is just like the one on Font Squirrel where you upload the image. What font is .com. Again, you just upload the image and it will locate the font. Fonts in PDF.com. You upload a PDF file and it'll search for fonts that are in the PDF file. Linotype has a font identifier which is like the one at Identifont where you have to answer a bunch of questions and it'll try to locate the font for you. And in the latest version of Photoshop, 
2015.5, it has a font identification tool built into Photoshop. So what you do is have your text. You come up here to type to match font. You select the area where you want it to read the font from. And it'll show you the fonts here that it thinks match it. You can see here it identified it as Hobo, which that is the correct font. All of these methods of identifying fonts work pretty well, but they don't always work. And if you have fonts that are similar to something like Times, or Arial, or Helvetica, or any of the most commonly used fonts like that, then it's going to be really hard to identify the exact font since they're so close. So you just have to kind of eye those and match it the best that you can. So the next thing we have is we have a few browser extensions that help you identify fonts like on web pages. And we have uh, what font. You can download a Chrome extension and it also has a extension for Firefox as well as Safari. On Chrome there's one called Font Face Ninja that'll help you identify fonts on websites. The next section we're going to look at is uh, font forums. If you've tried to identify the font using any of the other font identification sites and you still can't identify it, these are some websites you can upload an image to and ask people to help you try to identify the font. And this method is not the fastest because you're at the mercy of people on the forum to help you answer it. Sometimes they may know right away. Sometimes your question may never get answered if nobody knows what it is. The first forum is fontid.co. And there's a few different font forums you can post to. If you post a font to one of these forums and you don't get an answer, don't get mad and start leaving rude comments. If anybody knows, they will post and tell you what they think it is. And if nobody posts, it's probably because no one knows. So don't just post your font to one forum and leave it at that. Post it to as many forums as you can find and uh, that'll increase your chances of someone helping you identify that font. Like I said, be nice. These are other designers that are just trying to help you out. People that know fonts. And they will try to help you if they can, but please don't get mad if no one answers your question. So the next one is what the font. And you'll go to my fonts. You'll click on what the font and then go to form. And you'll post your image, your question. There's one at Reddit has a identify this font. You can post a question about a font. And then the last one, you can post a question about a font and they'll try to help you out. So the last thing we're gonna look at is font management software. Now the one I use is called Extensus Suitcase Fusion. And I've used this for as long as I can remember. It's pretty simple. You just, uh, you have your font library here. You can create a folder for each different font category that you want to keep separate. You can have the fonts on your hard drive. You can just drag them over, drop them in whichever folder you want. Here, you just click the little dot. You can turn them on, turn on the ones you want to use. You can click it to turn them off. That way you can just have the fonts on that you need to use and you don't have thousands of fonts on all at the same time taking up all your system resources because when you're using Photoshop or Illustrator those use a lot of memory so if you've got two or three thousand fonts that's going to eat up a lot of memory so this is really the best way to go is having a font management utility where you can turn off and on the fonts that you're using. Suitcase also has an extension that works with Photoshop and Illustrator and Adobe InDesign and Cork Express so this is Extensus website. You can go here to font management, click on Suitcase Fusion. You can even download a free trial for Windows or Macintosh, or you can purchase the software here on their website. 
Another one is called Font Explorer. Works the same way. They have plugins for Photoshop and Quark and Illustrator. You can download a free trial here. There's also one called Font Agent Pro. Again, you can have your fonts in different categories. Turn them off and on as you need them. Anyway, they also have a free trial that you can download. And there's also one called Master Juggler. This one's only made for Macintosh. They don't have a free trial. You may be able to contact them and ask for a free trial, but there's not one listed here on their website. And then the last one is Type DNA. They have a subscription that you can try it for free. It's available for Mac and Windows. So those are probably the five most popular font management software packages available on Mac or Windows. So as you can see, there are quite a few places to look for new fonts. Lots of places to help you identify a font and several software applications to help you manage all of your fonts. Oh, and by the way, I will make this font resource list available for free here on our Facebook group page so you can have all these references available whenever you need them. I will put the link in the description below where you can download it. You're welcome to join the group as well and discuss topics related to graphic design or just ask questions. So I guess that's about it for now. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.